Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. I will start with a question. What is the common factor between sexual intercourse, childbirth and breastfeeding? Yes, you guessed it, oxytocin. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss at length a very important drug used in obstetrics called oxytocin. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines because it is a life-saving medication. Interestingly, amongst the general public, it is well known as the love hormone. Later, I will tell you why this is so called. Looks like there is science behind the so called emotion of love. Oxytocin is a nona peptide, but its synthetic form that is syntocinone or pitocin is a decapeptide. Its chemical formula is shown here. In the human body, neuropeptide oxytocin is synthesized by supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of hypothalamus and is transferred to the posterior pituitary gland by carrier proteins by hypothalamo hypophysial that is portal circulation. It is a neurotransmitter as well as a hormone. One more important thing. In endocrinology, the only example of positive feedback loop is release of oxytocin. All other hormone release have a negative feedback loop. Oxytocin acts as a hormone and as a neurotransmitter in the brain. It has many different actions in the body which I will consider in detail. Oxytocin is an ecbolic that is uterotonic drug. In a full term gravid uterus it causes physiological contractions that is it causes contractions of the upper segment and retraction of the lower segment of the uterus. It has no action on the first trimester uterus and little action on the second trimester uterus. In the last 9 weeks, there is an eightfold increase in the sensitivity of uterus to oxytocin action. Sensitivity of uterus to oxytocin is increased by estrogen and decreased by progesterone. Oxytocin is an important hormone for lactation because of its action on breast. It causes milk ejection by stimulating myoepithelial cells of the mammary glands. It acts on the cardiovascular system also. Given as intravenous infusion in high concentration, it can cause profound hypotension. It also has antidiuretic action. Given in pharmacological doses, it can cause water retention because it is closely related to vasopressin. Recent animal studies have shown that oxytocin also acts as a neurotransmitter. The hormone of labor is also the hormone of love. Oxytocin is an important neurotransmitter in the brain. It is known as the cuddle hormone or the love hormone because it is released when people snuggle up kiss or bond socially. It is also greatly stimulated during sexual intercourse. Psychologically, oxytocin evokes a feeling of well-being and tranquility. In men, it creates sexual arousal and helps them maintain their erections. When you are sexually aroused or excited, oxytocin levels increase in your brain significantly a primary factor for bringing about orgasm. And during the orgasm itself, the brain is flooded with oxytocin, a possible explanation for why some couples like to cuddle after. Oxytocin can increase anxiety and fear in response to future stress. Studies conducted in mice explain that oxytocin can not only make us remember stressful situations from the past for example being bullied, but they also increase feelings of anxiety and fear in the face of future stress. 
द हॉर्मोन डज दिस बाय ट्रिगरिंग अ मॉलिक्यूल कॉल्ड ई आर के विच इट सेल्फ मेक्स सेंसेशंस ऑफ फियर ग्रेटर बिकॉज इट स्टिमुलेट्स फियर पाथवेज इन द ब्रेन स्टडीज हैव शोन दैट देर मे बी अ रोल फॉर ऑक्सीटोसिन इन ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ऑटिजम एविडेंस शोज दैट ऑक्सीटोसिन इंजेक्शंस हैव अ पॉजिटिव इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन बून हीलिंग ऑक्सीटोसिन काउंटर एक्ट्स द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ कॉर्टिसॉल less stress means increased immunity and faster recovery this may open up vistas for the use of oxytocin in conditions like chronic ulcers when given orally oxytocin has no action being a protein it is destroyed by gastric acid oxytocin is mainly administered by intravenous route it can be given intramuscularly or by intramyometrial injection it can also be administered by buccal route or nasally when it is absorbed directly in the market oxytocin is available as 1 ml ampule or 10 ml vial for intravenous use there is one special precaution for intravenous ampules oxytocin must be kept refrigerated and not at room temperature nasal sprays and buccal tablets are also available in the market interestingly an oxytocin laced perfume is available in many parts of the world please note i am neither endorsing this product nor do i know whether it actually works contraindications to use of oxytocin are grand mal de para because of risk of uterine rupture where vaginal delivery is not feasible for example obstructed labor transverse fetal lie previously scarred uterus which is a relative contraindication acute intrabatum fetal stress cardiac patients where intravenous fluids are contraindicated and previous history of anaphylactic shock following oxytocin administration oxytocin is used in obstetrics for following indications induction of labor augmentation of labor uterine inertia for these three indications oxytocin is given in physiological doses oxytocin challenge test prophylaxis of atonic postpartum hemorrhage treatment of atonic postpartum hemorrhage evacuation of vesicular mole and treatment of breast encolgement intravenous oxytocin can be given in three ways when used in induction of labor it is initially given in low doses and the dose is gradually increased till adequate uterine contractions are achieved this is known as giving in physiological doses when given in high doses such as 10 to 20 units in treatment of atonic postpartum hemorrhage this is known as giving it in pharmacological doses rarely it is used for medical treatment of evacuation of vesicular mole when it is given in doses which are doubled every drip and this is known as giving it in escalating doses for more details refer to my book practical obstetrics and gynecology now i'll talk about oxytocin dosage regimens for labor induction using infusion pump this table shows two different dosage regimens recommended by acog that are used for labor induction a low dose regimen is recommended for multipara and the high dose regimen for primary gravida the accuracy and control of infusion can be greatly improved by an infusion pump for example cardiff's infusion system the dose can be increased from 1 milli units to 32 milli units per minute and it is doubled every 12.5 minutes once adequate response is achieved further increase is stopped it may be reduced this is because the dose required for initiating uterine contraction is more than that required for maintaining them hence once cervix is greater than 5 cm dilated the dose can be decreased 
to 7 million units per minute. In some pumps, this is done automatically if intrauterine pressure transducer shows hyperactivity. For the benefit of my students from Southeast Asia, where fancy infusion pumps are not available in labor wards, I am going to tell you how we start and maintain oxytocin drip. In a primary gavida, take 10 units of oxytocin in 500 ml of normal saline or ringelactate and start with a rate of 30 drops per minute. Increase the drip rate by 10 drops per minute every 30 minutes till patient gets 3 uterine contractions every 10 minutes that are of moderate intensity and lasting for equal to or greater than 40 seconds. Maintain this rate till delivery or till side effects occur. Maximum dose that can be given is 60 drops per minute. If she is a multipara, take 2.5 units of oxytocin in 500 ml of normal saline or ringelactate and start with a rate of 10 drops per minute. That is 2.5 million international units per minute. Increase the drip rate by 10 drops per minute every 30 minutes till patient gets 3 uterine contractions every 10 minutes that are of moderate intensity and lasting for at least 40 seconds. Maximum drip rate that can be given is 60 drops per minute. If good uterine contractions are not established with infusion rate of 60 drops per minute, increase oxytocin concentration to 5 units in 500 ml of normal saline or ringelactate and start from 30 drops per minute that is 15 milli international units per ml and gradually increase the rate to 10 drops every 30 minutes until good contractions are established or a maximum rate of 60 drops per minute is reached. If labor is still not established, it should be considered as a failure of labor induction and patient may be taken up for alternative methods of delivery such as caesarean section. Stop the infusion if hyperstimulation that is contractions lasting greater than 60 seconds or tachysystole that is more than 4 contractions per 10 minute occurs. A question often asked in viva examination is how do you monitor a patient on oxytocin drip in labor ward. I will try to do justice to the question with a detailed answer. Oxytocin infusion is a potentially dangerous drug and requires the following facilities for its optimal use. An adequately equipped delivery area with trained nursing staff, resuscitation equipment, availability of operating room staff and facilities where caesarean section can be expected to be performed within 30 minutes, continuous fetal heart rate monitoring, preferably electronic. Patient must be under constant supervision. She must be monitored every 15 to 30 minutes for uterine contractions, fetal heart rate and any other complications. A record of these should be maintained on a chart as shown here. And now a Q&A session. When oxytocin is given intravenously, which diluent should be used and why? Answer. Administration of oxytocin in non-electrolyte solutions like dextrose water should be avoided because they are more likely to be associated with water intoxication and hyponatremia, especially when given in large doses. To prevent this, most labor ward protocols use electrolyte infusions like normal saline, ringer lactate or Hartmann's solution for oxytocin administration. What is titration method of administering intravenous oxytocin? This was first described by Anderson Turnbull in 1968. Here the intravenous drip rate is titrated against uterine response. It is initially started at 10 drops per minute and gradually increase till 3 uterine contractions of moderate intensity each lasting for 40 seconds per 10 minutes are seen. Once optimum labor contractions are achieved, the same dose or slightly lower drip rate is maintained till delivery 
of the baby. What is the maximum dose of oxytocin that can be used in labor? Majority of patients respond to 32 milli international units per minute or less. Although there is no upper limit, it is wise to consider prostaglandin stimulation if uterus is still inert at 100 milli international units per minute. How do you calculate oxytocin dose in milli units per minute by adjusting the drip rate? To understand the calculation of the dose, first you need to know two basic facts. One unit of oxytocin is equal to 1000 milli units of oxytocin and 1 ml is equal to 15 drops when a standard infusion drip set is used. Calculation is as follows. If you add 1 unit of oxytocin to 500 ml of the diluent, then 500 ml contains 1 unit that is 1000 milli units of oxytocin. Then as per this formula, 1 ml of the solution will contain 2 milli international units of oxytocin. Using this knowledge and the fact that 1 ml is equal to 15 drops, one can easily calculate the drip rate required for any particular oxytocin dose in milli units per minute as shown in this table. In majority of cases, good response is obtained with 16 milli units per minute that is a rate of 60 drops per minute when 2 units of oxytocin are added to 500 ml of ringolactate. Why is oxytocin never given as intravenous bolus injection? When given as intravenous bolus injection, oxytocin causes transient vasodilatation that causes profound hypertension which can be fatal. Hence, oxytocin should be administered intravenously as a dilute solution at a controlled rate. Since oxytocin is used in labor, side effects on both mother and fetus must be considered. Maternal side effects are hyperstimulation, tachycystole, rupture of uterus, amniotic fluid embolism, acute intrapartum fetal stress, and fluid retention if used in high doses. Fetal side effects are neuronal jaundice may occur in babies delivered to mothers who are given greater than 20 units of oxytocin throughout their labor. In conclusion, I will say this. The insights gained from more than 100 years of research indicate that the success story of the hormone of swift birth will continue unabated. The potential therapeutic uses of oxytocin and more long-acting and specific analogs of oxytocin are huge. Chemical, physiopathological, psychological, philosophical and ethical studies will reinforce the development of new drugs involving the use of oxytocin, its agonists and antagonists for various human disorders such as autism, premature ejaculation, osteoporosis, diabetes and cancer. For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology, refer to following books written by me. Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology Modern Obstetrics Modern Gynecology Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers Clinical Cases in Gynecology Questions and Answers and Pelvic Reconstructive Surgery If you have found this video useful and informative, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here.